Today, I'll be doing some of the pros and cons, um, specifically the V13 Challenger by Nmotion. First, I'm gonna talk about why I sold my car for this. The main reason was cost. As gas prices went up, this had no gas. It's eco-friendly, it's all electric. It's micro-mobility has the best value for travel that I've seen by far. It's basically pennies for a mile, maybe about a penny per mile. <laughs> Takes about, see ya! Bye. Takes about uh, maybe five hours to charge up. And with that kind of charge, I can go uh, real world like 70 miles. So that is quite the distance. You can commute me to work and back. And I figured if I kept something so uh, incredible, then I can basically sell my car and use this instead and share a car as a family, especially if I'm working from home personally. So the first reason I mentioned was cost. Uh, the second reason is portability. It can go places that cars and motorcycles can't, like off-roading. And the third reason I'd say for these is dependability. It's as simple as it gets with a wheel, motor, and uh, screen. So there's no exhaust, malfunctioning car parts, brakes to replace, no oil changes. I am at a thousand miles on this and I haven't even tightened a bolt on it, quite honestly. It has basically just been wiped down and run flawlessly the whole time. So we talked a little about the uh, reasons why I bought an EUC versus the car, but I want to talk about some of the pros and cons on the V13 specifically. These points aren't going to come in any specific order, but they are just what stood out to me. One of the first things you notice about this V13 is its size. And to me, that is a pro. Specifically, because of the reason of commuting on this wheel, I want that bigger size as it'll sit better underneath when riding seated. So when I sat, where I'm coming from is I only have one other wheel. I only tried the S18 King Song and that seat was too low. I could barely do it, but this felt like the right size, actually. Um, not too big, as many people say. I feel like the size is actually a plus. This kill switch here, I actually like it in the spot that it is. For me, if you were to lift this, you'd lift from these handles so you could get it higher. And if you're lifting from there, you just want your thumb here. Now you're not gonna lift this very often, but if you were to set it down, it's also in a good position just to seat it. Another top point and pro for this wheel is its power. It is one of the fastest, most powerful EUCs on the market. It can definitely handle uh, just about any speed you want to go. So the specs say up to 55 miles an hour. I've never touched that. Don't plan to. But it's nice to have that headroom if you're out in the street with uh, side street with cars in the bike lane that sits right there along cars. You want to be traveling a little bit faster and this is a great dependable wheel for power. An EEC will beep and warn you when you're about to overextend its power. And I have never gotten beeps on this even after a thousand miles. That was not the same with my S18. I quickly rose to its beeping limits and I've never found it here with this wheel. Not going too fast, not accelerating, not braking only once going too high on a dirt hill. I just slid out and lost it on the incline. So, but that was a pretty street, steep incline. That's the only time that I was really pushing the limits. My favorite things to do with the EUC is take it where cars and motorcycles can't go, like an off-road trail, similar to the rocks that you see behind me. And this is a very capable machine. And that's one of the pros for the V13. It can handle some of the roughest terrain. It is so much fun. It reminds me of a uh, Jeep, or a like off-road vehicle, like a quad or an adventure bike, but in a much smaller package. Another pro for this wheel is its quality design. I'd say it's one of the most beautiful, highest quality wheels on the market. It really seems like a finished product. You take it out of the box, an amazing unboxing experience. I've dropped it a lot, but it's in a big beefy cage, right? Like this shell is like metal, hard. Compared to some other brands, like I'm not even gonna say it, but th they have exposed batteries. Pretty much just with a t little bit of plastic shell. And this is not the case with this. This is 
the headlights protected. You're not gonna break that with this big roll cage that's metal. Why I picked this wheel versus others? I can't, is it's waterproof. I traveled in the rain and I went to work, uh, did Uber Eats, and even though it was raining and I was soaked through, this wheel stood the test, right? I even had uh, some lights made with underglow that were supposed to be waterproof. And those were uh, blown out by the water. So I had to get those replaced under warranty. Even to this day, I have those lights and I don't run with them anymore because they were broken so many times. But this, all I did is wipe it down with a cloth. There's hardly a scratch on it after a thousand miles. Tapered on the top, which matters on the riding style. When you are carving at high speed, you want a tapered style uh, between your legs so it's easier to hold on to. If you've ever been to the gym and you've sat in on those machines that you close and it opens your legs, or vice versa, you open your legs and close, it feels like that where you have to hold that machine closed between your legs with a lot of resistance. And a big heavy machine like this is hard to control, but that tapered design takes care of your legs and your knees, and it really matters in the riding style. Shout out to the wife, the family, putting up with me doing this during vacation. So if you are here with us, hit subscribe. This isn't paid for, this is my wheel. I bought this because I wanna share this micro mobility story of what it's like to own this with a family. And so if you wanna follow that journey, uh, hit subscribe. And the next point is the screen is bar to none, top notch. You can control just about everything here within the app. You can see it clearly in the sun. And the biggest feature about this screen is the security. So there's actually a lock code, and I don't know if this of any other use EUC except for in motion and this screen, which has a passcode lock so that no one can just pick this up uh, without knowing the code and take off riding with it, right? So it's protected like your iPhone. Granted, they could take it somewhere and steal it as it is very portable, but you never have to leave it outside because it has your trolley handle. So the final point about this wheel is a pro is that it's the safest wheel on the market. It has additional MOSFETs and technology there I'm not going to get into, but it's basically dependable. So there's headroom, and like I mentioned before, I've only experienced beeps like one time when I was over extending this wheel, otherwise it can handle anything I've thrown at it. There are some additional perks, kind of the last things, and I'm going to go through them a little bit fast, but some of the things that are different here is you can set a lean angle, so I can change it. I actually ride it a 6% forward lean which for me is comfortable. It makes acceleration feel effortless, while at the same time, the brake is right there and easy to uh, hit the brakes. So I have it at a 6% lean. I really have, a, you can go all the way to a 10% forward or 10% back, depending on your riding style. So I found that's what suits me for this heavy wheel. There's also uh, acceleration assistant. So you can set that for both braking where it tilts forward and brakes and actually have my brake assistant set all the way up. So it actually helps me to brake this heavier wheel faster. Uh, it's got a good stopping distance. It has an amazing headlight, probably one of the best on the market. It's super bright at night, surprisingly bright, um, the way it lights up the whole road in front of you. And I do a lot of night riding and trails, so it's phenomenal. Pedal height, the clearance is really nice. I still scrape the pedals, but it's very high. I like that for off-riding. There's a versatile tire from street to off-roading. It's handled a lot. And there's a strong rim that I haven't had any fear of denting. So that's kind of wrapping up the V13 Pros. Let's talk about some of the cons. For me, the suspension, it's great that it has it. I'd say it's a con in how it performs. It's probably one of the worst on the market with suspension. It's phenomenal, it's there, but it doesn't do great. I had to pump it up a couple times and I felt like it was hard to keep the air in there and keep myself from bottoming out. I think I've dialed it in now, but suspension isn't that great. The color, I don't know about you, but orange is not my color. I'd much rather have white. Small thing, I've seen uh, EUC in the six on Instagram, he's the probably the best V13 rider out there. Gone faster than anyone I've seen, uh, but he totally customized his white, and I think it's beautiful. I wish I could do that and have that choice. These pads, they're just mediocre. They're broken, 
and these petals are slippery when wet. So I really appreciate the design of both that they were not an afterthought, but they're not the best. And eventually I'll probably end up upgrading both the pads and the petals. The range for this heavy, it should be more. For me, it is enough. I've only really ran the range out one time in a thousand miles. And that was when I went to uh, work and back for a distance, did some extra deliveries and I did not bring a charger. It's the only time I've ran out of range. So I think for most people, it's gonna be just fine. But I think I want more for the weight that we have here. There's uh, less heavy wheels that can definitely go further, but there's something we'd have to sacrifice probably in the quality of this design, and I wouldn't want that. So I'll take the quality over range. So another con of the Speed 13 I actually had with the uh, my last wheel as well. It creaks now. So after a thousand or so miles, it's starting to creak a little bit. Nothing too concerning. It's just a little louder than I wish it would be. It was so silent at first, has some creaks after a thousand miles. Another thing I wish came standard, but I don't think this comes standard with any unicycle, is something like an air tag. So I've actually added one myself so I can track it in case it does get stolen or lost or misplaced. But there's an air tag now kind of hidden underneath this. I wish I could do that standard and just track my vehicle as a standard function. This is very heavy and I had to buy a loading ramp for it. So it's a little bit too heavy to just lift into the car and actually need to use the ramp for most cases I can do it lifting into the car, but it's just not gonna be a long-term thing. Not a lot of cons. I mentioned the only time I beeped was when I was climbing a hill. So I wish there was even more low-end torque, but I think it has a decent amount all the same. I just think it could be better. So some low end torque, it's outperformed by other wheels like the veteran Patton. And another thing, I had to buy this seat as well as this kickstand. And I think those should be standard. Uh, they each ran me about $100. These are in motion branded pieces that I had to order through an app called AliExpress. So it just makes it more complicated, but they are in motion built and they have holes where you can screw it in and place it on and everything lines up perfectly and it even has the branded name on it. So it's cool that it was included in the thought but not in the package. And I wish it wasn't an after purchase. Can you repeat yourself please? Over. Okay, knock the bug spray off. Okay, let's do, I'll come help you with this shirt. Let me just do one more point on this video and I'll be there in less than a minute. Over. I'd say is it's hard to turn on and off sometimes if it's out on tilt. For some reason, it knows through the gyroscope whether or not you're straight up and down and it won't allow you to really turn it on sideways. So if you have it in the car or something loaded, you can't just turn it on. It has to be here. <laughs> so I don't like that. And it kind of makes it hard to load it in and out. I'd say there is a couple of people it is not for. If you're a beginner rider, then I'd say this is not for you. You need to learn to actually control an EUC first on something lighter. I'd say if you're a woman or someone below say five, six, it's gonna be very hard to mount this. I even struggle getting on top if it's on an incline. I have a hard time getting onto the back of my wheel to get started up a hill. So this is just about the perfect size for me at five, eight. But if you're shorter or a beginner, you might need to choose a different wheel. Other than that, it is amazing if it's your second wheel for me or something beyond. You're moving up to one of the top of the line. This V13 is top of the line and you won't be upset. Great choice.